Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and don't forget to download the video as soon as it is available for you to download. And please maintain your language, speak nicely to each other and uh, let us not to uh, call Muslim names. You know, you better call people by what who they are. If somebody is lying, we will call him a liar, but unless he lie first, then he deserve it. So Today, uh, one of you, he sent me uh, this uh, text. I'm not going to show his name. Uh, but he had a discussion with the Muslim about the video I made. About uh, the Muslim speaking about Pal Talk. I will show it to you on the screen. <coughs> he said, regarding your video about Pal Talk, uh, is the pronunciation Ilayhunna is supposed to be the same as Ilayhinna? I noticed that what you said in Pal Talk is Ilayhunna. Hunna and a uh, Quran is spilling from the site shows Hinna. All right, my friend. Actually, if you go to my uh, Arab for a Christ uh, uh, page in YouTube, you will see I'm teaching Arabic there. All right, and uh, you will see this is called Tashkil. This is not about the reading, and I will show you. You know, they try to fool you with their uh, propaganda and agenda. And you need to ask yourself, what is the purpose of this? Let us say somebody, let us say for the sake of argument, you are a person who is a professor and you made a mistake in reading the word. If this is true, is that will make you not a professor no more? I mean, this is stupid. So uh, they are desperately trying, the, the, the whole idea in Pal Talk that day, the guy, he will not let me debate him. Read this verse for me. And he chose that verse because they Muslim themselves do not know how to read correctly. Now, I will show you from Google, peace upon him. You see, this is the word I did read, as it is in the Quran. I will hit at the speaker. And you know what? Let me zoom first so Muslim will not say, oh, this is not the same word. Hold on. Because it's mean to them. Ilayhinna. All right? So, Ilayhunna, Ilayhinna, depend how you read it with the Tashkil. The correct way, if there is no tashkil on it, is to say ilayhunna. And here it is without tashkil. And this is the speaker I will hit in the front of your eyes. Here we go. Listen to the word. Ilayhunna. Did you hear? Let me put it louder. Ilayhunna. Did you hear it? Ilayhunna. Again, I did not hear it. Ilayhunna. Aha. Uh -huh. Ilayhunna. Okay. I will go to the other way with tashkil. Tashkil is something you add in the top of the letter to change the sound, not the word. The word does not change. So they speak to you because they knew you do not know Arabic and you are you know, ignorant in this topic. So they try to fool you. We will go to Google. This is the same word. Nothing changed. Just we have Tashkil now. Tashkil is just to change the sound. Here we go. I will click at the speaker. The same exact word. Ilayhinna. Did you hear it? Ilayhinna. Okay, so what the sound? What the front? Here in the top of the, in the actually uh, underneath of the letter ha, which is this one, they have something called kasra. Let me zoom in, so you will see where, what what is the kasra. The kasra is not a part of the letter. The kasra is addition to change the sound. Like you want to sing it, you want to make it, uh, but it's the same word. You say ilayhunna, ilayhinna. It's the same exact word. Only donkeys they try to fool you because they are a bunch of ignorant. And they are desperate. How we can you stop this guy who is making Muslims leave Islam? Otherwise, who cares if it's ilayhunna or ilayhinna or ilayhunna? It's the same word, the same meaning. It's exactly the same thing. But this is when you are desperate, bankrupt, you take desperate measure. You see this thing under the letter here? Look like this. You see it? The one in the top of it. Let me zoom more. Do you see it? Let me let me make it thin so I can highlight the letter itself. Uh, um, we need something thinner. Okay, very thin. Here we choose something very thin. All right. I will zoom in. Actually, for me, it's small even to uh, to write in it. 
for you it looked bigger bigger because you are viewing it from YouTube and the screen is so small for me so you see this thing here this little thing this is not part of the letter this is not part of the word this is called tashkil tashkil is decoration is to add sound to the letter it is not part of the word so this is how they fool you if we take the same you see I, I can't take it off. It's not part of the word. I have not actually this has been added by someone is not even an Arab The one who add this he is a Persian <laughs> This is not <laughs> It's just to ease the reading anyway, so if we take the same uh, The same verse I will do this now. I will do the same verse Look this is the same verse as it is and here I put the word as it is in the Quran this is the Quran you can compare the difference between them only tashkil or without tashkil if you add tashkil you change the sound as simple but you don't change the meaning you change, you change the reading it's the same so this is Google, which is not a Christian prince, uh, you know, he's not working for a Christian prince, you know, this is Google, peace upon him. Let us see how Google read the verse. <laughs> Do you see? As I did read it. And the reason you expand, you know, I expanded the yeah, because simply here, like, uh, uh, you know, like, just to make it more clear, like, ilai, ilai is mine. This is the original word. Yahunna is to them. So, ilai yahunna. And even here in the reading is expanding the letter for you. Read, listen carefully. فلما سمعت بمكرهن أرسلت إليهن وأعتدت لهن إليهن إليهن anyway it's silly I mean who care but I, I'm just uh, to show you uh, for me I don't care what those Muslims they say uh, but today our topic is more important than this and uh, you know as long as long the Muslims speaking about reading the Quran uh, who can read the Quran better and uh, so that when I say what Christian prince you do not know to read the Quran like them. That be that would be the most stupid argument ever because ninety five percent of the Muslim do not know how to read the Quran and I know how to read the Quran better than your prophet. It is him who you say that he is illiterate. And the second I said to the guy, "Oh, are you saying I am the same as your prophet?" He changed the topic, and he said, "This is a miracle. My prophet do not know how to read. This is a miracle." And the whole purpose of this reading, we enter their chat room and we challenge them in their chat room. Who want to debate me? You see, they say Christian Prince, he don't come to us. I used to go to them to ter they get terrified the second they see my name. And this is why he said, I challenge you, if you can read this verse, this is supposed to be one of the most hardest verse in the Quran to read. Okay, he himself did not know. I asked him, Would you read it? Read it for me. Read it so, so we can compare between reading and my reading. He did not. So, uh, this is how they lie. And this is how they try to like to, to okay, don't listen to him. This guy, he does not know what he's talking about. This is the most silly argument, stupid. It is him who do not know how to read. It's his a prophet who is illiterate, and we are here to correct him. And actually, if you go in the same page of the Quran, like here, you see, uh, just you know, just to, to educate you. I will show you words which is the same almost in the same chapter. Do you see here? What is the last of this uh, uh, I see I read it again I, I will not change my reading. This is the correct way. So here this is the part Okay, and this is the exact part the same word do you see it the different here you will see this tashkil in this one there's tashkil here see this thing here this is tashkil I don't know if you can see let me choose different color I will choose <clears throat> uh, 
green let us see green you see this I'm not sure if it's showing for you on the screen anyway so this is the difference between them if I click at the reading which is in the website how is going to read this one and how is going to read this one listen carefully I'm not sure why it's not working okay it's the same word you see this part at the end after after this here after this part here and after this part is exactly the same word so what happened it's just a skill do you see how this they fool you it's the same yahunna yahunna <laughs> three letters ya hey noon ya hey noon ya is letter ya ha is h like equal to you know and n is this is called noon niswa which means the, the the letter n for women for women so to make things something belong to women you add this letter which is called the letter of the women the females so what the difference between the two words this this is a three the same three exact letter why here it is hunna and there it is hinna is that will change anything no this is just a way of reading listen again idea hunna Ay, they, ay, dia, hunna, ya, hunna. See, he expanded the ya. Ay, dia, hunna. But there is only one letter ya. There's only one ya. And this is the correct way actually to say it. Ay, dia, hunna. Ay, dia, hunna. Ay, dia, hunna. Okay, here. Ilay, hinna. Okay, but the same word. What happened? It's just a skill. So it's just to fool you because you don't speak Arabic. They try, okay, to say, okay, let us try to say this guy. He don't, you know, they just they cannot attack me. They cannot say anything, uh, you know, to take me down. Um, eh, look at this, uh, silly. But here, as long as we are talking about this topic, and I take advantage of this uh, Muslims claim, as long if a person he did not pronounce the Quran as they wish, pronounce. The, the 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 sound not the letters that the, the letters reading ilayhunna actually is the correct way and this is why if you put it in google as it is without the shkil google right away read it exactly as ilayhunna not ilayhinna because this is the correct way ilayhunna ilayhunna you see don't try not to sleep when you read it ilayhunna okay <laughs> So, but we have a bigger problem. As long as it's very sensitive for the Muslim to accept Quran reading, if you change the sound, not the letters, the sound, the tashkil, which is just a sound, is not even changing the meaning, changing letters. So how they accept this garbage here? Read carefully with me and let us try not to laugh. I heard Hisham ibn Hakim. Ibn Hizam reciting Surat al furqan in a way different of that of mine. What a way different of mine. The whole chapter recited differently. There is additional words, there's additional way of reading, additional sound. Everything is totally different. Allah Messenger had taught me, like, hold on, who is the one who taught him his mind of reading, the way he read? Allah Messenger had taught me in a different way. So I was about to beat him, to kill him. During the prayer, I could not take it no more. But I waited until he finished. Then I tied his garment. The guy, he tied him up. He, he arrested him. Around his neck, almost he is going to kill him. And sized him by it and brought him to Allah Messenger. He brought him like a goat, as if he is a bigger criminal. And I, he said, I have heard him reciting Surat al-Furqan in a way different to the way you taught it to me. What? 
the guy he was reciting the Quran in totally different way not a letter the tashkil the whole thing is messed up the Prophet order me to release him and ask Hisham to recite the one who was arrested all right when he recited, he recited the verses and the chapter, Al-Furqan, Allah Apostle said, it was revealed in this way. Like, what? <laughs> then he asked me to recite Tit, the guy who arrested the guy. And when I recited, he said, it was revealed to me this way. Uh-oh. But both of them, they have two, two different reading. Different words. So how you what do you mean it is this is how it's revealed it's revealed this way or that way the Quran and Muhammad continue saying the Quran has been revealed in seven different way to recite <laughs> and that was easier for you <laughs> So if I am reciting the Quran in a new way or a different way, are you going to arrest me? The guy here is using totally different thing, totally different Quran. And here Muhammad, because he is a false prophet, he got busted. So how he can explain to those Muslims, both of them, he is the one who taught them. Both of them, they are from the tribe of Quraysh. Both of them, they live in the same little city. I mean, the Quraysh is not even a city. It's not even a village. How two of them, they heard the Quran differently from the same man. His name is Muhammad. You see, this is not two guys. They heard the Quran after a, a thousand years. No. Both of them, they learned the Quran from Muhammad. And Muhammad admitted, okay, I taught it this way. This is how it was revealed to me. So how this happened? Because Muhammad, he could not recite the same verse twice correctly. So he says something yesterday. They ask him to say it today. He cannot remember what he said yesterday. So he added new words. And this is why we have two people here in this story, which is recorded by Muslims. And this is Sahih al-Bukhari. This is Sahih. As you see, this is Sahih, authentic al-Bukhari. Muhammad, he say, claiming that Allah, he gave him the Quran in many ways, in seven different ways, and that is to make it easier for you. What, what easier for you? If this guy, he can't read it, how come? I mean, both of them, they are Arab. Both of them, they are from the same tribe. Both of them from the same street. And what easier for this guy will be easier from that guy? If there is any Muslim is convinced with easier, what easier? Well, if there is an easy way, then nobody need the, need the hardest way. Do you understand me? Let us say I'm going to teach you how to build a house in seven way. And one of them is the easier. But then we do not need the other six ways because the easier is there. <laughs> Guys, do you understand me? Uh, people, do you understand what I'm saying? If I'm going to teach you, let us say you have, uh, uh, you want to clean your window. Hmm? And Christian Prince want to teach you the easier way. There's seven ways to clean your window. And from the seven way, there is the easier way. Okay, who need the other six? I mean, why you want to make it hard on you? Just give us the easier way. And that's it. One, one is enough. This is a proving to us that Muhammad, he have a low IQ. He's a stupid and he's a scam and he is trying to cover up a problem that his God he sent the Quran in seven way now why the Quran and Muhammad then he have to and but here by the way we need to remember something before those people fight nobody heard Muhammad saying the Quran came to me in seven way otherwise they would not be fighting correct you know what I mean how come Muhammad never before that day he did not say the Quran came to me in seven way so the Muslims will not be fighting each other because this is the time he got busted I'm claiming to be a prophet you come to my door you say hey CP uh, yesterday you told us the verse this and this guy today he is saying this so which one is this guy is a changing Quran I say okay this guy uh, recite the Quran for me he, I know him I am the one who taught him how to say it 
And the other guy, I am the one who taught him how to say it. So I cannot say to them both, I, uh, you are lying because I am the one who did that. So he said, oh, both of you, you are saying it correctly. If Muhammad, he received Quran in seven ways, why before this moment, none of those Muslims knows about it? Muhammad, he was hiding it. And that can be explained in the Quran. Muhammad, if you read this verse, and you read the interpretation and the reason for it, in order to cover why he forget Quran and why he is, because he obviously he looked like a fraud, you know, fraud. He says he made a verse saying, "Whatever a verse revelation we do abrogate or cause to be forgotten, we bring better." One or similar. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid statement more than this? So let us say you have a TV and your TV is 60 inch uh, big size. I break your TV because I'm going to bring you 60 inch TV. It's just the same. It says similar. Does it say similar? Okay. And Allah will make you forget the Quran to bring you better. Allah will make Quran better than his Quran. If there is better than the Quran, if there is Quran better than the Quran. What does that mean? Allah, He uh, He noticed that He His Quran, His Quran is not good. He will make a new one. Forget about. Guys, delete my old video. Uh, it's uh, strong. Uh, okay, I made a mistake there. Uh, forget about it. You know, I am Allah. What Quran better than the Quran? How Allah can make Quran? better than the Quran and if it's going to be similar so why you are why you are making me forget it and the fire the Muslim they say to us we never forget the Quran if the Quran is saying that Allah calls you to forget the Quran if you go and see what is behind this verse you will see that the Arab they were saying to Muhammad, obviously, you are really a fraud. Let us go to the interpretation. Or the reason for the verse to come down. Muhammad, he kept contradicting himself. He says something in the morning, he says something afternoon. And we, what he said afternoon does not match what we say in the morning. Sometimes he changed, you know, he forgot what he said. I mean, this guy is, is a crazy. Let us show you. You see, and we don't do what the Muslims do, try to explain a verse in the, in the Bible from their own. No, we don't do that. We, you know, uh, We show them their books. Read with me carefully. This is Tafsir al Jalalain, one of the biggest scholars of Islam. When the disbelievers began to dride the matter of abrogation, they start making fun of him, saying, One day Muhammad he enjoyed his companion in order, and the second day he forbid it. <laughs> One day, Muhammad, he enjoys his companion one thing, an order. Allah, he created Allah. He says, Allah told me this. Second day, Muhammad, he changed his mind and he forbid it. It is second day. It is not even next year. It's not even next century. It's not like Muhammad is coming after Moses and Moses says something and now it's time to change because that law at that time fit for that time. No, he himself, he says something yesterday. You see, when we are talking, he enjoy his his, his followers. It's mean he gave them command, command, you know, the law of Allah, the law, the Sharia. Second day in the morning, Muhammad, he wake up, he, uh, he shake his head, he brush his teeth and he brush his bum and then he come with a new law which is forbidding the old law. 
And this is why Muhammad, he came with this verse saying, anything Allah caused me to forget, Allah caused you to forget. Why Allah caused you to forget? What is, what is, the, what is the wisdom behind Allah causing you to forget the verses? And Allah will bring something better or similar. Do you see it? Now, the story is not over. How Muhammad here received the seven? This is the hadith for those who want reference, so you can save it about the Muslim fighting about reciting the hadith. Save it, please. So next time, if we say this, you know where to find it. Now, what happened exactly? How Muhammad here received seven Quran? Hmm? What? Uh, how how this happened? The story is very simple. Muhammad claimed that if you have one Quran, you Muslims, Islam will not be exist. My people cannot are not able to do so. Do you see it? Read carefully and love. Jibreel, the, the, the pizza guy, he come to Muhammad as usual. Allah has commanded you to recite your people Quran in one dialect. By the way, it doesn't say dialect. This is harf. Harf mean uh, different way, totally different way, different words. You know, there's different words and we can show you. So upon this, he said, I ask Allah burden and forgiveness. My people are not capable of doing it. What? Okay, question Muslims. You Muslims, you Islam cannot, are not capable with one Quran. How many Quran you have today? Hmm? Muslims, how many Quran you have today? Do you have the seven Qur'ans? How many Indonesian, you Indonesian people who they try to fool you? How many, how many Qur'an you have in Indonesia? They say to you, we have one Qur'an, right? Muhammad saying, if you have one Qur'an, Islam is not right. My people are not capable, capable of what? Of practicing Islam. Because what the purpose of the Qur'an? Is to be a book of guidance. So you can live as a Muslim. Okay. My people are not capable of doing it. Doing what? Doing Islam. Following Islam. One Quran is not enough. And here that is showing us something very, very important. Many people do not notice, by the way, because many people do not read, read what is behind the word. If I say to you, I am God, and I'm going to send you a book, and this book to guide you, and then a prophet, a man, a man, Amen. I'm God. Supposedly he's a man. He says to me, Hey God, one book is not good for my people because they cannot do that. That's mean the God is a stupid and the man is the genius. Do you understand what I'm saying? People, do you understand what I'm saying? Because here Muhammad is correcting Allah. Allah he sent one Quran. Muhammad don't agree. And Muhammad is saying Allah. It doesn't work this way. My people are not capable. What capable mean? They are not able to do such a thing. It doesn't work. So Muhammad is fixing God order. Don't Allah he knew that they need seven Quran? Isn't he all knowing? He is the one who know the unseen. Isn't it him who knew your future? Isn't it him who know your ability? So what does this mean? Stupid story. And then the angel Jibreel, he went to Allah, the pizza boy. He asked Allah for a second Quran. So Jibreel, he came and he said in the second time, second time, he said, Allah said, he commanded you that you should recite the Quran to your people in two dialect. Like what? Now we have two Quran. And then upon this, Muhammad, he, you know, he like, he, uh, 
he put his hand in the right place in his body and he scratched that place and he say upon this the holy prophet said again i seek pardon and forgiveness from allah my people would not be able to do so like what the hey like what second quran still is not good muhammad don't accept please come on i seek burden i protest i cannot accept this two quran is not good like what's happening here this is god sending you quran you say to him no then he jibreel came in the third time like what in the third time he said to him allah has commanded you to recite the quran for your people in three dialect upon this the prophet he said i seek pardon and forgiveness from allah my people would not be capable to do it three quran still you cannot do it And the Muslims are fighting with me about reading a word. They have a three books now, they are reading differently. And by the way, we don't have them. And then the story continue. Jibril, he go back, forward, forward, backward, forward. You know, Jibril is like the toilet paper, like, you know, put him there, put him there, put him here, put him there, put him there, put him there. He go back, forward. What is that? And then at the end, Muhammad, he agreed to, to accept seven Quran. Why seven? Why? Why is that? Seven seas, seven midget, seven skies. What? Muhammad is the one who correct Allah seven times. Allah, he thought one Quran is enough. Then he thought two Quran is enough. He thought three times because Quran is enough. Four or five, five. Each time Muhammad, he said to him, no. And then when they became seven Quran, Muhammad, he said, okay, I accept that. What does that mean? That means Muhammad, he was re reciting the Quran at least in seven different ways. This is what he claimed, just to cover his bum from, from being a false prophet. Why a prophet speaking to a tribe? This is Quraysh. They are a smaller group of people. They speak the same language, Arabic. Look, you see, we, when we say Arab, I told you Arab is not really an ethnic. The Muslims here, the guy who was in the video speaking to me, he is from Egypt. He is not even an Arab. And they don't know how really to read Arabic. They, they learn how to recite the Quran. I mean, it takes them a lot of work. They, for sure, there's some of them, they knew how to read Arabic very well. But generally speaking, Egyptian, they are, they are not Arab. They are African. Arab are not African. Uh, their skin is different. They, they look African. You know, they have, uh, you know, they are considered like a mix of white and, and black. But they are a totally different nation. And Arabic, if you go to Egypt, you will see they don't speak really the language of the Quran. Nobody speaks the language of the Quran. Not a single nation exists today. Speak the Arabic of the Quran. Based on what Muhammad said, we need a special Quran for Morocco. Even now today, Morocco, they claim that they are Arab. But the fact, if, you, if I go to Morocco and I am an Arab, I will not understand the word. Go and ask any Moroccan. They have totally different, you know, it's, it's not Arabic. It has nothing to do with Arabic. I can understand Arabic. Uh, I can understand Egyptian because, uh, you know, we have a lot of... Uh, TV programs, movies, so we used to you to hear them, you know. Otherwise, they have a lot of things we don't understand too, and they don't speak really Arabic. The street language have nothing to do with the Arabic of the Quran. So, what is the Arabic of the Quran? There is no Arabic of the Quran, as you see. Muhammad himself he says there is seven Arabic of the Quran. And here you need to ask yourself a question: If a smaller tribe like Muhammad tribe they need seven quran to understand the quran how you in indonesia or in india or in bangladesh or in germany or in america you will understand the quran do you understand me when muhammad he said 
that my people are not capable to of doing it he was talking about who my people who are they the Arab he's not talking about you as an Indonesian or Bangladesh because a change in the dialect of Arabic does not, does not change anything for you still you are you don't know Arabic at all you know what I mean what is the benefit for you as an Indonesian if you have seven Quran when all of them you do not know how to read them do you understand so this is all is a, is a stupid lie it's just a way to cover up that this guy he cannot repeat the same thing he said yesterday twice and this is why we see here in the interpretation uh, here it says and this is their books and what, what, what make it funny the Muslims made those books to defend the Prophet you know but when they defend him they expose him when the disbelievers began to deride the matter of abrogation saying that one day Muhammad enjoins his companions to one thing and the next, uh, the next day he forbid it This is a very great expose to this man. This man is a fraud. Why God did not give Moses seven Torah? Did you ask yourself? And the Jews, they spread all over. The Jews, they, you know, they are mixed with many languages. You see the Jews, because they've been enslaved many times. They, you know, been enslaved by the, by, by the Pharaoh. They enslaved by the Babylon. The, they, they are controlled by the Roman. So you can imagine how many languages involved in their life. Why why God did not give Musa's saving Quran? Right? Somebody saying your Bible is full of confusion. Uh, Mr. Justice, will the confusion the confusion uh, you would you like to call me to see the confusion? Mr. Justice, so let, let's let us laugh together. How dare you, as a Christian, can criticize the Quran in your own Bible? First of all, it is your God, and obviously your God is silly. He said, if you don't understand the Quran, go and ask the Christians. So, can you explain to me how your God he says such a stupid statement? It's your God who is saying, you Muslims, Muhammad himself. If he want to learn about God, he should go and ask the Christians. And here we go, chapter 16, verse number 43. Do you see it? How dare you? It's your God. He gave me a license not only to criticize the Quran, but to spank it. To spank even your prophet. And we sent not our messenger before you, O Muhammad. They went to Muhammad. Any but men, all of them are men, whom we inspired. Huh? So ask those who know the scriptures, the learned men of the Torah and the gospel. Do you see it? You're a prophet. He should come to my class to learn. Where is this guy, Justice? I think now he is hiding between the bubbles. Are you there? Are you? Did you put some extra shampoo in the bathtub so we will not see you? Where are you? Your God saying to Muhammad, go and ask the Christians and the Jews. Why? This is a chapter 16, verse number 43. How dare you? This is why they don't dare to debate me, because I, I will, uh, you know, the spank will come immediately. You notice that, right? So they go and say, Grizz and Grizz do not know, I do not know how to read the word, brother. <laughs> they do not know how to read the word. <laughs> it's obvious that Christian prince, he have no knowledge. It's so, it's so easy to know. Hmm? 
what happened to justice? The Quran gave me a license that I should teach you all of you Muslims, including your prophet. If you are a prophet, need to come to us to learn about God. What about the rest of you? Hmm? Silly man, don't understand the Quran by picking up a verse. No, we don't understand the Quran, my friend. What about you call me right now and I will open for you the interpretation by Muslims and whatever it says, I accept. Is that fair, guys? I mean, even this one need interpretation. Look, it's so clear. <laughs> and what do you mean pick up a verse? The verse saying, Muhammad, you have to go and ask the Christians and the Jews. Not only here. Let me show you another verse. Muhammad himself don't believe in Islam. And Allah, he said to him, go and ask the Christians. You don't believe me? Here we go. وَإِن كُنْتَ فِي شَكٍ مِمَّا أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ hmm? Let me read it for you. What في شَكٍ mean? فَإِن كُنْتَ فِي شَكٍ مِمَّا أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ فَاسْأَلِ الَّذِينَ يَقْرَؤُونَ الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ who are they? The Christian and the Jews. If you have any doubt concerning what we have revealed to you, talking to who? Muhammad. Go and ask who? Those who they have the Torah and the gospel. Does it say that? Question, why Muhammad he have a, uh, why Muhammad he have a doubt? Why Muhammad he have a doubt about Islam? He's a prophet. If the prophet he don't believe he's a prophet, how we can believe in him as a prophet? Right? You cannot heal Jesus in okay, hold on, guys. My Bible is faked, it's fake too. You cannot heal people in Jesus' name, and he speak about our brother Nabil Khurashi. My friend, you are being very, very, very silly. Uh, first of all, the power of healing is the power of God. If God decides to heal somebody, he can heal him, and this is in his hand, and he have his wisdom. Secondly, I will go and I will use your own logic. The book which is fake is the one who cannot heal. The God who cannot heal. Correct, guys? Okay. Muhammad, he was dying by poison slowly. Where is the healing of Allah? How many times the Muslims they pray to Muhammad so Allah will heal him? How many times Muhammad he says, Please God, help me. Allah, please help me. Allah, my stomach. Allah, my heart. <laughs> How many times Muhammad was doing that and Allah did not answer him? What did you respond? Are you there? See the hypocrisy? So, our prayer could not heal Nabil, Nabil Qurashi uh, because the Lord, you know, he answer as he wish and he do as he wish. But your Quran says that Jesus the Christ, he heal any he wish. So, this is not my power. This is the power of Jesus. I am not the one who heal. I pray to the Lord to heal. The Lord maybe answer my prayer. He might answer my prayer about myself. He might not answer. God, He do 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 things for a, for a, for a wisdom. Now, why your God did not answer Muhammad prayer? The last thing Muhammad he did after all this uh, madness and this uh, illness, dying by poison, he pissed and he died. He did not even say shahada. He did not even say the name of Allah. He pissed. His last word is not worship Allah. His last word. I want to piss. Let me see if I can find you down.
anyone have the link for the hadith it's not coming here so Aisha she said that the last thing the Prophet he said he did before he died he asked for a dish he pissed on it and he died this is the last thing he asked for I'm trying to find the hadith. Here we go. We found it. Do you see it? Aisha, Allah bless on her, blah, blah, blah. Huh? Uh, at the time of the death of Rasulullah, she gave him support with her chest. Or she said with her lap. He asked for a container to urinate. He urinated. They're in, therefore he pass away. Do you see it? This is what the last thing a prophet of God he do. Look how, how many Muslims calling me names, but nobody dare to call me and prove me wrong. Who is a Muslim would like to call me and prove me wrong? And our topic, if you don't want to talk about this, no problem. Why Muhammad he received seven Quran? What was the real reason behind the seven Quran thing? Why God did not give Musa seven Quran? Did Allah give Isa seven Injil? Did Allah give Abraham seven books? Did Allah give uh, any prophet seven seven books why Muhammad he have been given seven books what was the problem what is the reason any Muslim the answer is very simple Muhammad is a fraud he could not repeat the same verse twice so he put a maximum seven time people notice that this guy he cannot repeat the same verse twice correctly. As simple as that. And the proof in front of you. The Arab in the time of Muhammad, they were laughing at him because he gave an order to enjoy in the morning and he forbid it in, in, in second morning. When the disbeliever began, began to, to dride the matter of abrogation saying that one day Muhammad enjoys his companions to one thing, and then the next day he forbid it. How you want to explain to me this? Two is a Muslim hero. This is Tafsir al Jalalain, and this is a chapter 2, verse 106. How the Prophet he enjoy you a law from God, the law of God, Sharia. Today he says something, tomorrow he forbid it. What happened? What is behind this? Anyone can tell us? Please use use nice language in the text. Any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim want to say anything to us? Is that because Muhammad he lie and he forgot what he say? He have a very bad memory, so he say something, or because maybe he say something and people laugh at him and he find it stupid, so next second day he change it. What 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 is the answer, Muslims? Any Muslim? My Skype is open. If any Muslim would like to call us. A Muslim saying to me, showing weak hadith. Do you see the Muslim showing what? Weak hadith. Hmm. This is a weak religion. If the hadith is weak, which one is weak hadith? Which one is the weak hadith, Abdul? Guys, listen to this. This is another proof that Islam is a cult. If Allah, he said, follow Muhammad and follow the Quran, which means whatever Muhammad he's saying, you have to obey. 
You have to obey the prophet. Hmm? Okay. How we can obey the prophet if the hadith is not preserved? We just saw a Muslim saying hadith is weak. That's mean the Muslims they say that the hadith of uh, the prophet, which means hadith means a speech or saying. They are saying that uh, Islam is corrupt because Islam cannot be stood as a religion without the hadith. Actually, most of the verses of the Quran are abrogated by a hadith, which is funny. As an example, the Muslim they say we don't practice muta no more. This is chapter four, verse twenty-four. Okay, where is the abrogation verse? We cannot find it. They say it is in the hadith. So when a Muslim he say the hadith is weak, that's mean he's saying to us Islam is not preserved because Islam cannot be the Quran only. You have to preserve the hadith. Do you have a preserved hadith? Any Muslim can tell me where is the book of the preserved hadith? Which book? Anyone? Islam is a da'if religion, da'if, weak religion. Allah could not preserve the hadith of the Prophet. And the funny, actually, Muhammad, he said, don't write my hadith. If you mean this one is da'if, by the way, this is Sahih Bukhari. So if Sahih Bukhari is da'if, I mean, what is left? You see it? This is Sahih Bukhari. Your prophet, he died by poison. Anyone? <clears throat> Any Muslim? What happened? And the funny, when Muhammad, he said, anyone who write my hadith, he should. Uh, you know, he should destroy it. So it should not have any hadith. Have you ever heard of a prophet here receive his wisdom in a dish? Have you ever heard of a prophet here receive his religion in a dish? What do you say? Accept Christianity or we will burn you alive by claiming you as a witch. Uh, first of all, my friend, Islam killed the witch, the one who do magic. Do you want to show the reference? Secondly, uh, this is not from the New Testament. This is from the Old Testament. And the reason for that, because those people, they are controlling the mind of people and they are deceiving them, stealing their money. They are fake and they are false. And your prophet, he followed the steps of the Jews one by one. And you Muslims, anyone you want to kill, you accuse him to be a kafir or murtad. And that's why you Shia and Sunni kill each other, even the Sunni killing Sunni. If you go right now in, in Egypt, we find that the country is Sunni Sunni, Sunni killing Sunni. Why? Well, the group of Sunni, they are Muslim Brotherhood, they say the other Sunnis are kuffar, we should kill them. And you are trying to change the topic because you are ashamed. What kind of God he sent his wisdom and his faith to his prophet in dishes? Is that a pizza delivery? Are we are we working in a restaurant? Any Muslim have an answer? Did Allah send his wisdom to Moses by doing a plastic surgery and he sent it in dishes?
Anyone? Read carefully with me. The night Allah Messenger was taken for journey from the second mosque of Mecca. By the way, it doesn't say, you know. Anyway, the Kaaba. Three person came to him. Why three? Why three? Three? Huh. Uh, and then one of them he said, and he was the middle, uh, the middle second angel, whatever. He is the best of them. The least, uh, the third angel said, take the best of them. The best of who? The best of mankind. That's Muhammad, you know, for sure. Only that much happened at that night. And he did not see them until they came another night. After the divine inspiration was revealed in the chapter, blah, 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 blah. Okay, then uh, they took Muhammad, they carried him. And they placed him be, uh, beside the will of Zemzem. From among them, Jibreel, he took a charge on him. And he cut open the part of his body from here to here, actually, from his throat down to his testicles. All right? And then he says, and he took the material out of his chest. And the abandonment, the what? The abandonment. And he washed it with Zemzem water. With his own hands till he cleaned the inside of his body and then a gold tray containing gold bowl full of belief and wisdom brought a golden tray inside it golden bowl full of belief and wisdom Allah he sent his belief to Muhammad in a dish. Muhammad received his wisdom in a dish. Any Muslim have a comment? Hmm? The angel he cut his chest open and he started plastic surgery to Muhammad. Any Muslim have a comment? And then after. He did the plastic surgery for Muhammad. He installed inside his chest wisdom and belief, which came in a dish. Do we have any Muslim here when I say something? This is a prophet of God. Who of you really believe in this story? If a Christian prince, he come to you tomorrow and he says, God, he sent me an angel. He cut my chest. He took off my stomach. He took off my whatever. He cleaned it with the water of uh, Pepsi Cola. And then he brought a dish of gold full of faith and wisdom. And then he stuffed my chest and my heart and my even my my throat with the wisdom and believe. Hmm? Mr. Justice, I always I use Muslim logic to get them busted. Look what you just said. Give gave why it took them 300 years to decide the book of the NT. Why it took Allah 600 years to send Muhammad? First of all, nobody took him 300 years. That's a lie. Go and see the book, The History of the Church. You will see the father of the churches. The, there, there was cults. There was cults. And now there's cults. Nothing changed. Jehovah's Witnesses, Islam, etc. So why Allah took him 600 years to decide this is a book or not? Why Allah did not send anyone between Isa and Muhammad 
to say, hey, this book is wrong. You see, your argument is silly because you are bankrupt. Your argument is silly. And instead of telling us about how God, he installed with wisdom and faith by a dish in the heart and in the chest of the prophet. You have no answer. Hmm? No, this is not true. There is nothing is called a 300 years. What 300 years? We don't have a 300 years. The book, the books of the apostles, they are written right after Jesus, you know, he, he went to heaven. What 300 years? All those books are dated to right away after. Even if you go watch Muslim debate, they say to you, the book of John, the book of John written between 60 and 90 years after Jesus. This is a long time. They accept Muhammad book who came 600 years after, after Jesus talking about Jesus. <laughs> Do you see the hypocrisy? Do you see the hypocrisy? If you don't accept a book for the sake of argument let us say the Bible came uh, 400 years after Jesus how you accept a book came 600 years after Jesus without witnesses who is the witness of Muhammad we have thousands and thousands of manuscript we have art we have history historian who they are not even Christians they are Roman historian who speak about the crucifixion of Jesus the death of Jesus and what happened he speak about the Christians so we have a lot and there is no book in the world even those who attack the Bible they said there's no books in the world they have back up as much as the Bible even those who attack Christianity who is the one who will back up Muhammad zero he saw the angel the angel came into him they cut his chest they put the uh, Wisdom inside is a chest. And what? Believe. Why Muhammad don't have a belief? And this is how God, he make you believe by making a surgery. I thought Allah is God. If you want something, he say, be is going to be. Why he need to open the chest of the guy? Correct, guys? If Allah is God and Muhammad, he need a plastic surgery. Do Allah need to send the three angels to fix the chest of Muhammad or he can say, hey, be Muhammad, be wise. What this uh, is about? Huh? The four gospel with no names. Well, that's a big fat lie of you. So why it's called the book of John, you idiot? <laughs> why it's called the book of Luke? <laughs> they have no names. <laughs> What is the name of the book? The book of Luke. And there's no names. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, let me ask you. Your Quran have no names. Your Quran have no names. Who is the author of the Quran? You see, I'm going with you. Who is the author of the Quran? You Muslim, you claim, if I open my Quran in Arabic, it says, this Quran according to recitation of the following. Hafs, Ibn Asim, Ibn Ibn, Ibn, according to, 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 according to Ali, according to Uthman, according to the Prophet. This is according to book. Where is the book of Allah? Where is the book according to Allah? This is story in the front of us, according to who? Who is the witness that the three angels, they came and they cut the, 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 the chest of Muhammad and they install a dish of faith and dish of wisdom? Can you name for me 
the names of the witnesses you see in Islam you need four witnesses to prove a woman having sex with a man but in Islam you do not have four witnesses that a prophet is a prophet who is the witness that Muhammad he went to heaven nobody even his wife she said his body was here which means he did not go anywhere he's a liar Uh, the one who say the F word, you will be blocked if you say that again. Anyone he come to our form and he use a foul language using the F word, we will block you. Literally. Is that clear? We are not straight boys. Take your garbage and leave. This is a warning for anyone who use a bad language. And I don't care who you are. And by the way, using a bad language is a clear evidence that you are a donkey. Even if you claim to be Christian, let me tell you why. Because a person who can control, he cannot control his tongue, that's mean he is not a human. The difference between us and animals, we have a brain, we control. So be human. Therefore, will not make you a smart person, will not make you a human, will make you a trashy person. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Let me see in Skype I have. <clears throat> All right. All right. Great the Lord. This is a guy he spoke to me many time, many time he is uh he was from uh, Turkey. I'm not going to say his name. He is saying to me he spoke to me many years ago. And uh, now he's been touched by, you know, by by the Holy Spirit. And he accepted the Messiah as his Savior. He spoke to me many years ago. All right, my friend. God bless and happy for you. Uh... Do we have any Muslim want to call us? Any Muslim? As you see, they have nothing, you know, except calling me names and, you know, liar. And they challenge me to read the word in the Quran, which is silly. Like, this is kids' talk. Kids. This is the level of kids. How we can discredit this person? Who is making Muslims leave Islam left and right? How many Muslims left Islam just last week, live on air here? And how many Muslims left Islam after watching every video of we our videos? Because do you know how many people they copy my videos and spread them and they add subtitles? Go and see what's happening in Indonesia. Newspapers talking about me. Where is the scholars? How they can? How come they are not answering this guy? This guy is spreading his poison. He is making people leave Islam. Yeah, this is a good question. Where is the scholars? I changed them all of them. Where are they? Here we go. My Skype is open. Nobody is stopping you from calling me anytime, any moment. We have Abbas. Uh, Abbas, the only scholar he called us. He is the only scholar. <laughs> hey, Abbas, how peace are you? Peace with you, brother. Uh, peace with you, too. 
Oh, well, you improve or you go against your Bible? No, I'm you against No, my, my Lord, He says, pray for yeah. those who hate you and bless no. them too. Yeah, it is you who is going, it is you who go against your Quran. Your prophet said, Don't initiate salam to the Christians and the Jews. Did he say that or not? And your fake apostle Paul says, Don't greet those people who come to your home. Don't know those no, who don't, don't welcome them in your homes. Don't greet them, which means don't enter no. in your home. No, 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 don't, said, don't, no, don't, said, don't, don't greet them, don't welcome them in your home, which means said, don't, no, no, don't no, no, allow no, no, people said, who will teach false teaching to enter your don't home. Lie. Uh, don't lie, read that in Timothy. He says, don't welcome them in their home. Thank you. And don't greet. Yes. Don't, don't welcome greet. them. Don't. No. Okay. And don't greet no. them. What does that mean? They are not welcome. Meaning you're not. You're not supposed to greet me. You're not supposed to greet me. You're okay. So you. So you, so you agree that you are a scam. You agree that you are a scam. You agree. Agree that you are a scam. Okay. You see. You see. You see. Okay. Let me ask you. Did Paul order the Christians to kill those who they are coming to your home? Did Paul? Mm. He might have. Okay. Did he know. order? No, you have to show me. Did Did Paul? He ordered the Christians to hurt those people who come to your home. No, no. Did, did I want to answer? Did go, Paul order them to hurt those people who the, you see them and they are not Christians? You see, you Christians, you scholars. I'm asking you. Father, I'm asking you. Why you not answer? Okay. So why? Okay. Did he? Did he? Did, did he? Uh, uh, listen, listen, Abdul. Did he? Did he or he did not? Did he order the Christians to hurt those who they are the Christians? Yes or no? Why always yes or no? There's no other answer in the middle? No, you have Why? because you are the one who have knowledge. You don't have a knowledge now? No, okay. no, no, no. I'm asking now, okay, as long as you will not answer about this one, I will answer. Uh, okay, hold on. I will answer. No. Now, I'm asking you. Did your prophet, he says, don't greet them and hurt them? Don't run away from your Bible. We are not. We are not. We are not. No, those are people not in the street. Those people are coming to your home to deceive you. So don't greet them. Don't welcome them. They are not welcome here for they are false like Muhammad. Now, the question is, he never says hurt anyone and they are not welcome in our houses. Now, I'm asking you, did your prophet says don't greet the Christians or he said hurt them? No, no, no. I'm not going to let you off the hook, man. I'm not going to let you off the hook. I'm going to pin you down. Listen to me here now. I'm listening. Go the ahead. Answer is, uh, the answer is no. The why Paul didn't say that is true. You say no. But the reason is, hmm. what's the reason behind it? Because you Christians, the church father, were such a hypocrite liars. Hmm. What they did, they have about 300 books. Out of the 300 books, they picked 27. 100 gospels. Out of, out of 100 gospels, they pick only four. Whatever choose their way. Who is the, who is the one who chose? Who is the one who chose four? Wait a minute, I'll tell you. Hmm. Do you know these uh, Dead Sea Scrolls? Dead Sea Scrolls we found now. What the Dead Sea Scrolls telling us? Hmm. Scholars say Dead Sea Scrolls say that Paul was a wicked preacher according to Abionites. Hmm. He was, yeah, sorry, according to the Essenes. Hmm. He was a wicked preacher. Hmm. A, a bad man, an evil okay, let man. Let me ask you, do you, agree that Paul, do you agree that Paul, he was a bad... No, 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 you see, I don't know. There's, there's many cults. No, Abdul, listen. There's many cults, and I can show you that too. That Ahmadiyya, they say that Muhammad is not the last prophet, and this is a lie. And they have their own new book, and they have a new religion, and they say that Allah, he spoke to Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, and he is the Messiah. Is that going to be used against you? Is that going to be used against you as a Muslim or not? Is that going to be used against you as a Muslim or not? So let us, let us, you see, don't, don't change the topic. You, you, are a, you are a coward as usual. Why are you are changing the topic? Let's go one by one. Did your prophet say, hurt the Christian when you see them in the, you are the one who quote for me, Paul, right? Okay. So don't change the topic. Did, did, did Muhammad, Paul, he said, don't greet them. You are the one who quote the verse for me. So be a man. So Paul said, don't greet them. Don't welcome in your houses. That's what you said. I agree. They are not welcome. Okay. Now. I am saying to you, did your prophet say, don't welcome them in your home or you have and you have a duty to hurt them in the street? You greet me. You're not a Christian anymore. You know that. No, no, I agree. No, I agree with you. No, I agree with you because Jesus says, bless those who curse you. I can bless you too. I can bless you too. I can bless you too. Not only I can greet you. Paul here is speaking about specific place. They are coming to your home to deceive your children. So don't welcome them in your home, not in the street. So now I'm asking you, did Muhammad say, hurt the Christians and the Jews when you see them in the street? 
Jesus of the Bible is a hate preacher. What are you talking about? Well, I, I okay, answer that. about this and teach me about the hate of Jesus. Go ahead. I see what Jesus of Why are you a prophet? Preacher. I'm asking you, my friend. I'm asking you. Be, be a man. Be a man. Did Muhammad say when you see Christians in the street, you should hurt them? I already told you last time. I what you told me now? You did not tell me. You ran away. You did not tell me. You did not tell me. You did not tell me anything. Okay, tell me now. I'm listening. I'm listening. Did did he? Did he or not? Did he or not? So you do not have a courage to talk about Bible for two. I'm talking about the Bible. I answer you. I answer you about the Bible. I answer you about the Bible from Paul and from Jesus. Both of them. They never teach hate against anyone. They are coming to us in our house. They are not welcome. But we, if those who pray, those who curse us, we pray for them. Those who want to hurt us, we bless them. This is what the Bible says. Now I am answering you. Can you answer me? Why Muhammad saying if you see Christian and the Jews in the street, you have to hurt them and force them to walk in the sewage. You have to force them to change the direction. You have to take them after the road. I will answer. Hmm. But you just what you're doing is what you can't do that what you just did. Hmm. You always say something nice about Bible and run to the Quran. I have to address what you said about the Bible. I'm going to refute you okay. what you said about the Bible. Then I come back to Hadith and the Quran. No problem. All right. All right. But you just can't do that. Make the Bible and Christianity good and come back to the Quran and yes or no. You can't just do that. Now I'm going to refute you. Hmm. Who's greater? Jesus or Father? Uh, no, don't, 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 don't change. Don't change. You can, you can. You, this is, this is, we finish this. Uh, listen, 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 listen. Let us talk about hurting people and greeting people. Our topic now, uh, Abbas, listen, don't act like a kid. Our topic now, you are the one who opened it. You said, Paul, he said, don't greet them if they come to your house and don't welcome them. Okay. Okay, I, I, he said that. I agree. Now, did Paul he say hurt yes, those sir. people? No. Did Paul say be evil to them? No. Did Paul say to them do damage or harm to them? No. So now I'm asking you, what kind of a prophet that has compared between Paul teaching and Muhammad teaching? Muhammad said that when you see Christian and the Jews in the street, you have to humiliate them. You have to force them to walk in the sewage. Question: Why? Uh, why? Okay, I'll, 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 we talked about it last time. Anyway, no, we did not. No, you'd never answer as usual. You, you, you run. You keep to, you keep repeating yourself until I hang up on you. This is what happened always. You never answer anything. Okay. You will keep talking, talking, Listen, talking. Man. You say nothing, and then I, I hang up on you because I lose my patience. Now go ahead. Uh, you know what? You don't have to hang up today. I'm hanging up on you. <laughs> Coward potato. <laughs> potato. I hang up on you because you're ashamed. So you say to me that Paul, because he said they are not welcome in your home, he's a bad person. They are coming to deceive you. There's a huge difference between saying those people are not welcome in your home for they are teaching evil. And saying when you see them in the street, hurt them. Humiliate them. Do you see the difference? And you know what? You want to teach Paul about love? First Corinthians 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail, whether there be tongues, they shall cease, whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. 
When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. And charity here is translation for the word love, by the way. This is in translation here coming as charity. So the greatest of all things is love. And you are saying that Paul, he was evil. Shame on you. He's saying if being a prophet or so what? Huh? Giving money to the poor? Okay, so what? I have wisdom, so what? All will perish. The greatest of all things is love. And you are talking about Paul. Now show me where your prophet he says that. Show me where your prophet he say one of this wisdom. Little. While Paul was sacrificing his life to save people, your prophet was making verses saying any woman she want to give herself to the prophet so he can do boom boom with her. The greatest of all things is love. That is the one you call him hateful. Shame on you. And this is why you hang up. This is why you hang up. Secondly, when the Muslim they speak about the Bible corruption, ask yourself the, the silly question to the Muslim, the same silly question. Okay, why the Bible of Allah is corrupted? <laughs> Because the Muslim they claim that this is the Bible of Allah. So when you say the Bible is corrupted, he is the Muslim shooting Allah in his bum. He is saying that Allah could not protect his book. As long as Allah could not protect his book, that means Allah cannot be God. Because God who cannot protect his book, he is no God. Regardless if it's the God of the Christians or the God of the Jews or the God of the Hindus or the God of the Muslims. You Muslims agree that the Injil is the book of Allah. What is the Injil of Allah? You say to me, it's corrupt. That's mean Allah is false God. Because when somebody corrupt the word of a book of God, he is making a crime against God. How come this God could not stop that? Isn't it the Quran says, لا مبدل لكلمات الله? Nobody can exchange or change the word of Allah. Huh? Isn't it the Quran says that this is a book, if you find contradiction in it, this is for sure, this is not the book of God? All those verses saying nobody can change the word of Allah. Look, look how many. 456. Uh, sorry, 446, no. Uh, 634. 615, 115. 1064. 1827 all of them say is nobody can change the words of Allah and yet the stupid religion of Islam says that the word of Allah changed and not only that they claim that all the words of Allah is destroyed starting from Abraham until Muhammad the only one Allah decide to protect is the Quran and then we find that the Quran eaten by a goat Do you see how the Quran is protected? And we found that there is verses about the breastfeeding for adult are gone. Do you see what kind of God he teach women to give her boobs to strange men to suckle it? That is a teaching of the devil. Not only it's a false teaching. This is a teaching of the devil. This is a devilish teaching. A woman she give her broob to a strange man. What is that? What is the wisdom behind that? What God? Is that a hippie God? Is that a hippie in the beach? 
What kind of God? He says, any man, any woman, they like to have sex for three days, three nights, go, have fun. Why? He was a hippie? Hmm? He was a hippie or what? Anyone want to say I'm lying? This is Sahir Bukhari. And look here, the Muslims, they add the word marriage. Marriage? Have you ever heard of something called temporary marriage? There is a religion encourage you to marry a woman for three days, three nights. It's called Islam. This is marriage? Or you can marry her for one night. This is marriage? Or two hours. This is marriage and you have to pay her after she take off her panty. Hmm? This is this is God. And you are talking about uh, uh, Paul. Who is a Muslim would like to call us? Who is a proud Muslim? He like to call us. Okay, we have a Muslim here. He is using a bad language in Arabic, so we are going to block him. Uh, uh, Mr. Dr. Green Hump, uh, do you want me to show you your prophet saying go and buy the private part of your father? Do you want me to show you that? Here we go. As long as you like to talk about sucking and biting. What kind of a prophet he says such a thing? And the Muslim, they translate it in a very funny way. They say that the prophet says, anyone he is proud about in his heritage, go and bite him. Bite him? This guy, he was saying that Paul was bad. Did the prophet teach you to bite us? Did the prophet teach you to bite us? Bite us? Who as a Muslim agree with this translation that the Prophet, he order you to bite people in the street? Anyone? The fact he did not say that. This is false. The stupid who translated the Hadith, he is trying to hide the truth. He did not say bite him. I do. Tell him go and bite the private part of your father. I do who be him a bee. Tell him to go and bite the, the private part of your dad. What bite him? The prophet he taught you to go and bite us? And this is Sahih. You see, if I am a deceiver, I will go now. Actually, I, I, will, I, will, I will make a video about it. Just a special video. I will make a video title says, the prophet says, go and bite them. I will do what the Muslims do. But I don't do that. This is not what it meant. But I will make a video just to show you how they deceive us. The purpose of this is, you see, they're trying to fix it. Because the worst scenario is to say, go and bite him. Better than saying, go on and tell him to bite the private part of his father. Go and bite him. Do you see it? What is that? German Shepherd? Kunya is the last name. Kunya, like because he's proud about his last name. You know, like don't he is proud about his inheritance. So if you are proud about who you are, if you're an Indonesian, huh? If you say I'm proud to be Indonesian, Muhammad says, the one who says that, tell him go and buy the, the the because you can be only proud about Muhammad. You can't be proud about who you are. 
Muhammad he own you Muhammad he control you you are a slave of Muhammad not of Allah Allah is just a name Muhammad he used to abuse what is the problem if somebody he is proud about his heritage actually I just made a video by the way I don't know how many of you watch it go watch it about why we should keep our heritage especially the good part of it if you do not see it after you finish this uh, broadcast go and watch it what is this and uh, uh, this poor uh, guy uh, Abbas who washed dishes of his wife and he have no idea what he's talking about you know he you see if Abbas is a true Muslim he should not accept to live in England because he should have four wives the Quran says start with two start with two a three and four and if you cannot go with one Abbas cannot he cannot handle more than one and he is talking about Paul and why Paul is bad he said don't greet those who come to your house trying to teach you evil and by the way this advice of Paul is for those who they are not very well versed uh, for me I, I I welcome Jehovah's Witnesses in my house we sit many time and they left uh, many of them they left Jehovah's Witness actually my house is a trap they avoid they avoid it no more they come first time they come to me this was a long time ago uh, two guys they come to me I said good and they were so happy because usually people they kick them away but they don't know they are getting the house of who we said we start talking and then after like two hours one of they, they decide to leave the other guy get angry he said, okay let's go the other guy he said I'm staying they get in two Jehovah's Witnesses who is preaching the false cult of Jehovah's Witnesses now the the one one of them he says let us leave the other guy he says no I'm staying so they get in as two Jehovah's Witnesses they left out as one Jehovah's Witnesses the second day they want to have revenge so they bring me like more well-versed person supposedly they want to like uh, they want to they want to win I mean like what happened we get in instead of making him Jehovah's Witnesses he make the guy Christian not Jehovah's Witnesses second day they brought another guy with them the same as the Quran look in the Quran says exactly what happened and the Quran says the Quran speak about Paul <laughs> you believe it <laughs> Paul ah <sighs> If you go in chapter 36 specifically verse number 14 you will see this verse is speaking about the three disciples of Jesus and this is alone proving to us that the Quran is nothing but a scam this guy he was just attacking Paul when his scholars they agree that the third most powerful person between the disciple of Jesus was Paul according to Islam and the Quran says that we send to them too and they accuse them of being liars then we string them with the third three why three I mean isn't it enough to send two no three the Trinity huh and who are they those three if we go and read the interpretation we will find that they are Paul and John and Simon Peter is that true absolutely am I lying well, I can show you the reference we don't hear everything we say here we show you from Muslim books we don't say things from our own we don't do that we don't do what the Muslims do we do not do the same method of hypocrisy and fallacy of the Muslims they do if we say something against Islam it's not from our book it's going to be from their book their book says that and this is why they are afraid to debate me because I'm not making a statement I'm proving it and there's a huge difference this is Ibn Kathir this is what Ibn Kathir interpretation from chapter 36 verse number 13 to 17 
Is that Christian Prince? No. And by the way, Ibn Kathir in English is totally different from Ibn Kathir in Arabic. It's full of fictions and uh, fabrication of translations. However, even there, we will show you who are they, the three messengers of Jesus. Read it, read it with me. We reinforce them with the third means. We support them, strengthen them with the third messenger, Ibn Juraj, narrated from Wahab Ibn Sulaiman, from Shu'aib al Jabi. The names of the first two were Shamoon, which means Simon, Simon. Shamoon in Arabic, that's why you say it from the Hebrew. Shamoon and Yohanna, John. And the name of the third, Bolos, which is Paul. Do you see it? And the city was Antioch. And the Quran claimed that Paul is the messenger of Allah, but was sent by Jesus. How Jesus, he is a not God, yet he can make three of his disciples messenger of God. Do you see it? Is that a statement Christian Prince is making? Oh, no, this is their Muslim book. And this is Ibn Kathir. And not only that, those people, they did miracles in the name of Jesus. Who is the one who hired Paul? Who is a Muslim can explain to me why Paul is there? I heard, the, you know, Muslims saying Paul like the, the that, saying Jesus did not see Paul. No, he saw Paul. The Bible confirmed that. He appeared to him and he spoke to him. And then if this is not true, then fix the Quran. Because your Quran is saying that Paul is the messenger of Jesus. So look what the Muslims they do. They always insult Paul, call him names, and that to prove that Muslims are disconnected nation from their religion. They are copy paste. They heard the dad saying Paul is bad. They heard somebody saying the one who made the Christianity today is Paul. So they follow the river of the sewage. But look what their scholar they say. They mention Paul in their tafsir as the messenger of Allah, and he is the strongest between them. So how we can max, we can mix this together? How a Muslim he insult Paul? We just heard uh, Abbas and all of them they do, and then their book says Paul was a messenger of God. The answer is very simple: Muslims are just people looking for desperately for anything to downgrade you, me, my belief. And it doesn't matter how much dignity in this war they use. It's a war against the truth. False accusation, false logic. Like a Muslim says to you, okay, the book, the book of uh, uh, Luke written uh, more than 30 years after Jesus. Okay, Muhammad, his book written 600 years after Jesus. No, actually not 600 years. Because the the older Quran we have, or the Muslims they have today, is more than, let us say, 800 years to uh, maybe 900 years after Jesus. And it's not written by Muhammad. It is a copy of recitation. So they, re they refuse the book which is made or written not long after Jesus, but they accept the one who came hundreds of years, including Muhammad. Muhammad himself, he came 600 years after Jesus. I mean, how somebody came 600 years after Jesus can witness to Jesus. Right? Look what this uh, 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 Mr. Justice is saying. The Arabian Prophet, this is not Quran. It is some scholar say so. Okay, hold on. So you are saying to me that your scholars are a bunch of potatoes and you who do not know how to read the name of your prophet correctly, you are going to school them. You believe it? This guy, he just showed us that Islam is a stupid religion. And if you read the scholars of Islam, so why you call them scholars in your... Uh, God, did he say in the ear, some scholar? Did he say they are a scholar? I mean, you yourself, you call him a scholar? I mean, what kind of a scholar? He is an idiot. Some scholars, not only one, some, some. And those, by the way, are not a scholars, you idiot. Ibn Kathir is a scholar. The rest are witnessing from the time of Muhammad. Ibn Juraj 
We are not talking about someone who came a couple of hundred of years after uh, Ibn Kathir. This is why Ibn Kathir is saying Ibn Juraj say so, Ibn Sulaiman say so, Ibn etc. say so. If a Christian prince he says so, they will say a Christian prince is not a Muslim, he is not a scholar. Now he's saying he's a scholar. So the scholar is not a scholar. Is he a scholar or not? If he is not, why you call him a scholar? And how a scholar he makes such a statement? He was drunk at that night. Okay, somebody using the F word. Let me find him and ban him. Anyone, where is this name? I don't have admins today. Where is this guy? Anyone will use a bad language against Muhammad, against not Muhammad, I don't care. I will ban you. You are not welcome here. Where is the name of this guy? Please admin, if you can help me, we have one admin here, I think. If you can't find the guy who said the F word, give him maybe time out first time. If he repeated again, block him. Anyone he do that, block him. Bad, filthy language are not welcome here. Now, Mr. Uh, Justice, as long as this is, not, this is a scholar and your scholar is a stupid, can you give me the names of the three angel, the three uh, prophets here? Who are they, those people? I forget. I mean, what the point of this story if we do not know who are they, who they are? Who they are? You are the one who said to me that the Bible written by unknown names, as you claim, the, the four gospel, which is stupid of you to say, because the name it says the book of Luke. This means the written by Luke. The book of John written by John. Very silly. So I'm asking you now. There's the three messengers sent by Allah. Who are they? Where they go? What language they speak? What kind of book this book is? Shish kebab? Who are those? So your scholars are donkeys and you said that. Okay, I agree with you. I agree with Mr. Justice. Those scholars are donkey. But as long you call them scholars, and they are donkeys that's you that's mean you are a mule because you call them scholars but yet they are donkeys so what kind of a donkey you are to accept a donkey to be your scholar do you know what i'm saying if those scholars are donkey and yet you call them scholars that's mean you are a mule Because the one who called donkey a scholar, he have mental issue. And Abdul, I have a question for you. Why your prophet did not say Paul is the problem? Muslims, why your prophet did not say Paul? So the scholars will not uh, go, go confused. Why the prophet he say, did not say in the Quran he have he have time to tell us about women women they are horny they cut their hands when they say Joseph this is what happened to me when I walk in Islamic countries because I'm very handsome brother Muslim women they see me they are making like uh, hummus and salad they cut their hands this is how it's uh, Joseph the sexy Allah he have time to tell us about Joseph the sexy but he have no time to tell us who is the one who corrupt Christianity Instead, Allah in the Quran, he says he confirmed what we have. He did not say we don't confirm. Look what he says. He agreed to what we have between his hands. Oh, the Quran speak about confirming what is between his hands. The hand of who? The Bible, the Gospel, the Torah. Do you see it? So, how come your prophet did not know about Paul? 
and why he is confirming the Torah and the gospel oh you will say to me this is not Allah talking this is a stupid scholar this is Quran Abdul do you see it confirming huh confirming what is with them you see he says what came before but he's confirming it at that time the fact it says Lima what is between his hands if you change the translation you will see how the translator changed everything is it confirming what is in the past or confirming now confirming now to what to what is between their hands Let us see this guy. This is a new translation, Maududi. Let us see the Maududi. Look, look, look how they try to fabricate and say, confirming what was revealed before it. It doesn't say that. It says, confirming what is between his hand. You know what? I will copy the verse as it is to, to Prophet Google translation, and I will show you. It says, to what is between his hands. Here we go. Google translation. Copy paste. The brother. Hmm? Hmm? Google translation is messed up. All right. And we're leaving. It did not. It's, it's not loading the whole thing. Okay. Let us, let us uh, copy the part where it says. Maybe this is long for. Okay. Copy this part. And. Read it. Read it. Believe in what is in his hand. Actually, the translation is not correct. It says what is between his hands. Depend in the translator. So Allah confirm what is between our hands or not. And there's many verses, not only one. Huh? Look. What about this one? Look, oh no, actually, all of those it says, you know. Hmm. What is one one saying? Look, it says here, confirming whatever book revealed before it. How you can confirm it if you don't have it? Translation is false. Confirming what between his hands, and here we go. The same Baina Yadehi change the translator. You see how they try to fool you? Let us see. Um, uh, let us see this one. I don't know who are they, the translators before it. It doesn't say that you can copy the word as it is. To Google, hmm? exactly as it is. You put it here. Hmm? Do you see it? Liars. They took the hands off. They took the hands off. There's no hands. Between his hands is gone. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Justice, he said something very important. Look what he said. We Muslims, uh, we agree that anything that in the Bible agree with the Quran, but nothing in the Bible agree with the Quran. <laughs> like what? Mary is the daughter of Omran. Who is Omran? Mary is the sister of Aaron. Aaron is the, is the, is, is the brother of Mary and he is the uncle of Jesus? So if we go in the Quran right now, we will find the chapter three. The title of it is a chapter called Al Imran. Okay, who is Imran? The father of Mary in the Quran. But Imran is the father of Moses. And later the Quran says, Ya Ukhta Harun, O sister of Aaron. The, the, the Muhammad, because he heard the Jews saying that Aaron and Moses, they have a sister. Her name is Maryam.
he thought that this is the same Maryam. Idiot. Maryam, the sister of Aaron, and their father is Am Amram. And this is supposedly the grandfather of Jesus? Are you sure? <laughs> what is that, man? What's happening here? Any Muslim have an idea? Yes, the Bible confirmed that Aaron, he have a sister. Her name is Maryam. In the Quran, Maryam, she became the daughter of Amran, which is the father of uh, Moses. And Muhammad even pronounced the name wrong because it's not Amran. Amran. It is Imram, which means the last letter is M, not N. But because Muhammad is copying the Jews, the same as like an Indonesian person trying to speak uh, uh, Hebrew, he will make a mistake. The letter here is letter M, not N. It is Imram. So Mary, the daughter of Imram, the sister of Aaron, nice to meet you. Which means your prophet did not even he was not even even capable to code the name correctly and the heritage and the lineage. Who is who is this uh, Mary, the sister of Aaron? And the, when they got him busted, he says, "Oh, at that time they used to call them by their great ancestor, but Mary, she is not from the ancestors of Moses. They are from different tribe." And the mix between the father of Mary and the father of Moses is a clear proof that he meant that she is the sister, Mary, the mother of Jesus. She is the sister of Aaron. Huh? What is the name? Ask, ask any Muslim, what is the name of the father of Moses? Mr. Justice, what is the name of the father of Moses? Amron. Okay, how this happen? How both of them, they have the same name? I thought this is called Ali Amran, the verse. Ali Amran is about what? We should not have to Amran. Otherwise, don't call it Ali Amran because there's only one Amran. The people of Amran. But the mother of Jesus, her, her, her father is not Amran. How such a mistake happened? And why the Christians or the Jews even will change that? Because remember, the one who converted to Christianity, the first convert are the Jews, not us, not me as an Arab. Many people think that Jews did not believe. This is a lie. The first one who believe in Jesus, the disciple of Jesus, they are the Jews. And actually, if not the Jews, we are not a Christian today. This is why you see some stupid people, this, they try to teach hate against the Jews. That's stupid of you. The Jews, they have a great favor for you. They sacrifice their life to bring Christ to you. So how this chapter called the chapter of Amran, if this is the last name of Moses, and this is a verse, chapter speaking about Mary, the daughter of Amran. Any Muslim can tell us? How this confusion happened? Because Muhammad is a false prophet. As simple as that. She is the sister of Aaron. And look here, between two brackets, it says, the like of Aaron. This is the true. What she is the like? She is the like of Aaron. How? I.e. the like of Aaron. Mary, she is the like of Aaron. Why? She's a man? She's a prophet? You see the stupidity they try to cover up? She is the like? What like? And you change the translator, you will find that the translator he take of the like. Where is the like now here? What happened?
No, people have similar. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. It's obvious. First of all, you see, uh, justice. What you just said now proved to me again that Islam is a stupid cult, because if Mary father is not Amran, and you cannot explain to me why Allah calling him Amran, and if Musa's father is Amran, according to Islam, how this happened? How this mistake happened? They don't have similar names, no. Mary, she is not, she don't have a father, his name is Amran. Do you know even what the father of Mary name mean? I mean, why the Christian, they will change that too? This is a book written hundreds of years before Muhammad. Why in their Bible? They changed the name of the, the why? They knew that Muhammad will come after and he will say Amran. Very, very silly argument, my friend. And she is not the sister of Aaron. But yes, there's a woman, her name is Maryam. She is the sister of Aaron. And Muhammad, he got himself busted. This is why uh, Kabul Ahbar, actually, he is the one who corrected him. He came home and he told Aisha, well, as I know, there's a couple of hundred of years between Maryam, the, uh, the sister of Aaron, and the mother of Jesus Aisha she said to him you're a liar you're a liar that's mean Muhammad this is what he meant when Muhammad came home she told him what Kabul Ahbar said who is a Jew so Muhammad now he said oh oh I just did poo poo hmm? I just did poo poo And he have to fix it. So he told them, "Ah, oh, they called him by the great ancestor." Hmm. Anyway, <clears throat> we are live, and no Muslim will call us, as you see, and what we can do. Where is the Muslims when I prove us wrong? Seven Quran, seven lies. And by the way, Mr. Justice, can you give me the seven Qur'ans you have, which Allah, Prophet, you receive? Hmm? Do you have the seven Qur'an? I'm waiting for the seven Qur'an. I'm desperately waiting for them. Is it enough to read the Qur'an, one Qur'an, to understand Islam? The answer is no. Why Allah did not give Musa seven Torah? Same to Abraham, same to all the, the Islamic prophets. The Quran mentioned 25 prophets. How come only the people of Muhammad, they need seven Quran? Any Muslim have explanation? Because Muhammad is a fraud. He cannot repeat the same verse twice. Watch the video from the beginning. We explained that. And by this, I think we are done for today. Don't forget, please, to download the video. As soon as it is ready, it take maybe uh, you know maybe twenty minutes sometime for the video to be ready. Usually, I put it in a private until it's ready to download, and then those who they are in Patreon, they can download it and share it. So if it disappear in my page, don't worry. Just search for the the same title later, and don't forget to subscribe to those who they download my videos, and there is many of them. If you are Indonesian, try to to subscribe to the one who uh, add subtitle which is not easy job by the way to do I mean to add subtitle for a long video like this actually I wasn't planning to stay for long so maybe if you are a person adding subtitle cut the video let us say I was talking about the seven letters in the beginning cut it make it about the seven letters topic only that will make it easier for you to repost it and be consistent with the topic I want to say thank you for all who are here and those who support us and those who uh, copy the videos and those who donate and even the Muslims who try their best to refute us but always they face a failure not because a Christian prince is a genius but because Muhammad is a false prophet you cannot defend the false prophet try it try your best and you know what I am always welcoming anyone who claim to be a scholar with long beard 
to call me anytime don't even tell me about the topic don't tell me when don't tell me how just call me take me into surprise hmm take me into surprise you see Muslim don't dare to debate a person unless they said that they two months from now and they go print in the internet a thousand uh, uh, a print of pages because they don't know they don't have knowledge about the topic that's why they cannot accept an open topic because they are not prepared How, why you need to be prepared why somebody he need to be prepared about anything if he is a scholar you know what I mean why someone claim like with the like Shabir Ali who kept running away from from calling me or let me call in him or the Dean show need to be prepared and why they run from certain people who speak Arabic why you want to debate only the guys who have a blue eyes and they don't speak Arabic the answer is very simple you knew that if you debate people like me is going to be the end of your career go and watch the debate between me and the guy has called himself dr. Hassan yesterday go watch and die laughing watch it and die laughing laughing you might have heart attack that is the truth and the truth will set you free thank you for being here may the Lord bless you all Christ is Lord Islam is false and see you soon again Thank you.